clients and students have found the getting one model to be deceptively powerful. When you use it, at least three things will probably happen. First, you will discover the problem you start with is usually not the real problem. There often will be some underlying problem or lurking behind the obvious. When the real problem emerges, you'll be better able to find the solution. For example, Rhonda Crook at SEI Investments, a major financial management firm, thought the problem was that a client kept asking the company to do work not included in the contract. But after going through the model, she discovered the real problem. SEI contacts are too vague. This is what caused perception to differ between SEI and some of its clients. The fix was to write clearer contracts. The second thing that will very likely happen is that you will find more options for solutions than you thought you had. Even experts in a field, when they use this model, find new ways of thinking about goals, problems, and solutions. A technical problem manager at a major technology company did not want to pay higher prices to a major supplier. But the company was cutting its volume with that supply. Using the model and doing role reversal, the manager found out that the supplier would not raise prices if the supplier could be introduced to some of the company's other divisions. It's very hard for suppliers to penetrate major technology companies, the manager said. By offering introduction elsewhere, we broadened the deal. The supplier essentially traded actual cash in holding prices the same today in return for introductions. On intangible, the possibility of broader future business with a technology giant. The third thing that will happen is that you will have a much better idea of the pictures in the head of all concerned how they differ and what you should do about it. A woman in one of my executive TV programs could not get her daughter to call in when she was out late. Her daughter wouldn't even discuss it. The mother thought the daughter was irresponsible. Then we went through the mother and the mother played the daughter. The mother realized that her daughter thought the only problem was the unreasonableness of her mother. Now, the mother knew how to start a discussion with her daughter. So tell me how you think I'm a uh, regional. You will get many other new ideas too, including how to frame things better, how to get commitment, and how to be incremental over the breadth of new insights that come from this model can be profound. One of the first ways I used this model in an important setting of a siege was with the Lithuanian science sector in 1993. Soon after the country's independence from the former Soviet Union, some colleagues and I were assisting the science sector 
in commercializing from Soviet science in the West. We had a room for people, the Minister of Industry, the head of the science sector, and dozens of scientists and officials. We were scheduled to meet for the day. The purpose of the meeting was for the various groups involved to try to find effective solutions. We had already assigned the problem, and I had just finished going over problem and goals at about 10 a.m. Suddenly, the country's chief scientist stood up and wagged his finger at me. We are not in school. He is quoted in English with a deep Russian accent. We don't do this. Much of the rest of the room chimed in. Now that was a problem. I had a mutiny against our process by a hundred with alien leaders in front of a mist. There were long-term implications for all of our work in the country, which was sponsored by the UN. At the least, I needed to persuade them to stay in the room and work through our model, even if the day was shorter. There were benefits to be gained for the country, but the most credible guy in the room was inserted. He felt he was being treated like a scruple. He needed an emotional payment. All right, I said, that's fair. I could hear a sigh of relief from one of my UN colleagues behind me. Then I needed to keep them involved in the process long enough to get them to see the power of the model. So I slowed things down. I became very incremental. I said, it's time for a coffee break. Why don't you have coffee and pastries with your assigned groups and just start on the beginning of situations, analysis, quadrant two. When the coffee break ends, if you don't like the process we've laid out, you can leave and never come back. Having coffee and pastries was a small step, so people were willing to go along with it. How could the chief scientist oppose a coffee break? And what I asked them to do was such a small step that it would be impolite not to do it. At 6 o'clock that evening, almost 8 hours later, we could not get them out of the room. Finally, the cleaning staff kicked us all out. The group generated so many ideas during that one day and that it took the country three years to implement them. Working through the model, however, during a negotiation uses only half its potential. The other huge advantage comes from doing a simulated negotiation with it beforehand. The idea is to try to replicate what the negotiation is going to look like when you later actually sit down with the other party. It is highly unlikely that the other party is going to say before the negotiation, I know you are preparing to negotiate with me. So why don't I come over and help you prepare? Using the getting one model is the next best things. Run through the negotiation with another person or team as it might occur. 
it will provide you with insights as to what might happen. You will be amazed at just how much information you will hum away with. The person who owes the problem plays the role of the other side to get further insight into how to persuade them. The point of the negotiation simulation is not necessarily to obtain a result, although results and additional options are useful. The point is to see what the process will look like, what do good and bad openings look like, what should be said, and in what way, what should be said. For example, we once had a negotiation simulation in which some made a suggestion, whereupon some on the other side reflexively said, drop that. Everybody realized that if the suggestion were made during the real negotiation, the deal would probably fall apart. So we made sure the suggestion was not made in the real negotiation. Jennifer Mori, a San Francisco attorney, said that when she was at Yahoo, she was having trouble with an advertising client they wanted more control over the look and feel of their content posted on the Yahoo site. Then we were prepared to give them to sell. So she played the role of the client in a simulated negotiation. She found it that the real problem had nothing to do with the, the content on the web page. It was lack of trust dating from the beginning of the relationship, she said. The client was afraid Yahoo would steal its customers. So when the actual negotiation occurred, Jennifer was able to articulate the client's fears. The client thought she was a mind reader. She was able to allay the client's fear enough to have a discussion and solve the problem. In conducting a negotiation simulation, you need at least two people to negotiate each side of the problem. Otherwise, it's harder to brainstorm. You can have as many as four people on each side or each people total. After that, it gets a bit on weird. Remember, this is a two-party negotiation. So you have to have a specific person on each side to negotiate with. Also with each side has one spoke person. Everyone should be able to speak up in a real negotiation. That is not optimal. But in a brainstorming session like this, the point is to get as many ideas as possible. You can do a simulation with more than two parties. Don't attempt that until you've really got the model down. Otherwise, there are too many variables. Two parties are op is optimal. Or a series of two party negotiations. In the simulation, the owner of the problem must play the other side. That is, in the simulation, the problem owner must make the best case possible against himself or herself. This kind of role reversal makes the problem owner stand in the shoes of the other party and really try to understand their perceptions. In other words, 
the problem owner prepares as the other side it would prepare. The problem owner assisted by at least one other person the negotiate at the other side would negotiate. At the same time, others prepare and play the role of the problem owner. The problem owner essentially gets to see himself or herself negotiate. This is what Sharon Walker, whose mother was dying of cancer, did as described in chapter 1. Often, you will discover greater insight about the effect of the problem owner's arguments on the other side, and what arguments might better be used. Make sure everyone has the same facts. Give a brief background for everyone beforehand. Then, the side separate physically out of earshot of each other, and go through the getting one model, answering each item from the point of view of the role they are playing. It should take 45 to 90 minutes to go through the checklist properly and answer all the questions. This will be hard for some problem owners, but as the Tom Hank character said to the Gina Davis character, in the baseball movie, a league of their own, after she wanted to kid, it's supposed to be hard. It's the hard that makes it great. After preparing, both sides should come back together again and negotiate the rules they just prepared. Don't be a fly on the wall, don't lapse into philosophy, stay in character, and make the best case you can for your side. This will give you a sense of the dynamic that is likely to occur when you are in the real negotiation. Do it for at least 45 minutes, although you can do this for hours if you wish. After the negotiation is over, reflect on what happened. Talk to the other party about what happened. Show each other your preparation notes as what worked and what did it. What insights did you glean that can be used in the real negotiation. Finally, you need to turn this into a plan on how to conduct the real negotiation. Write up all the notes in one consolidated getting one model for the owner of the problem. Now, instead of thinking for a few minutes about the other person's perceptions, you will have the idea of several people who have spent 90 minutes on it, thinking deeply about both parties' needs, about the standards to use, the option available, and so forth. The result will be a much richer preparation. Remember, the problem owner doesn't need people who are experts. He or she just needs a fresh pair of eyes. This is because most of the negotiation is about the people and process, not expertise. I once prepared a six-person corporate negotiating team for a $300 million negotiation. We enlisted 30 other people who were not involved in the negotiation. We divided the group into six teams of six people each. We put one member of the actual negotiation teams 
on each of the six teams. Then we ran six simultaneous negotiations with the same set of facts. We spent the whole day on it. The results were terrific. The negotiating team got a lot of more perspective and ideas. They discovered a lot of issues that had not previously surfaced. They are much more prepared. You can take as little or as long as you wish on this 15 minutes or all week. At each moment you spend makes you more prepared. In 1993, just after the fall of the Soviet Union, I assisted the Prime Minister and 28 ministers of the newly independent Latvia in organizing their first popularly elected government since the Russian Revolution of 1918. The government officials had asked for a three-day session and retreat outside Riga, the capital city. As I approached the main meeting lodge at about 9 a.m. on a Friday, I could already hear people screaming at each other. One big area of dispute involved government subsidies. The agriculture minister thought that much of the available money should be used to grow wheat. Wheat is made into bread, which feeds the populace and as an export brings in foreign exchange. But the defense minister thought much of the subsidy should be used to buy arms. Latvia was a bit, unst a bit unstable after the fall of the Soviet Union. Without a strong defense, the government could be overthrown, the defense minister argued. I told the group that this dispute was a very good topic for discussion. Everybody got a big emotional payment and calmed down. I then said that I had a really good way to deal with this. However, I needed a specific commitment from everyone, including the defense and agriculture ministers, to my beings in charge of the process. They were not totally clear on where I was going with this, but since I was respected enough that they had hired me for a weekend, they made the commitment. Okay, I said, we are going to have a debate in front of the group between the agriculture minister and the defense minister. There were chiefs. The subject is subsidies and also anything else you want to debate over. The agriculture minister and the defense minister each strode to the front of the room. They are flushed with the anticipation of battle. There's only one process, room, I said. Each of you has to debate the other side's position. Pandemonium broke loose. No, you can't do this. I want the two ministers said one by one. Half of the other ministers left with delight. The other half took 
size. Didn't you say I was in charge of the process? I said. Didn't everyone in this room make a solemn commitment? Standards and commitments. But the defense minister said, I can do it. Of course you can, I said. You know each other's position, quote. What you don't have is that you don't fear each other's perception. You have to fear it. You have to perceive it. Give me to find an agreement. I promised that it would be worthwhile. I reminded them that they hired me for my process expertise. I told them we didn't have to do it for more than an hour, maybe even less. Accordingly, they agreed. I asked each of them to prepare separately, helped by whichever other ministers wanted to help them. I gave them a simpler version of the model. We started with a five-minute opening statement, then we had a negotiation. I wrote up the various points they were making up on flip chart. Various other ministers called out points for the two debaters to make. After about an hour, we ended the debate. I went over the points they had made, which I had written down. After a break, I said the two sides need to meet and figure out what their proposals were. Based on what had come out during the debate. Then the two ministers met again in front of the group, this time in their own words. I told them to figure out a reasonable agreement based on what they had just been through. As one could imagine, they developed stepped goals and provided subsidies to meet each incremental goal. They agreed to check frequently against the target priorities were set. The two ministers told me and the group it was the best experience they had in solving problems in all their years as government officials. But as I've said, throughout getting more, it was not a rocket science. Thousands of problems of profession and personal have been solved in and after my courses using this model. One woman at Columbia Business School insisted that her learning team used it to solve a dispute with her husband over both control method and it was resolved. A potential plant of hide and harm an investment banker refused to accept the fee schedule in the bank's engagement letter. By putting herself in the client's shoes, Hyde realized it was not about fees but about performance. The client wanted to make sure they got value for their money. We put in a performance-based incremental fee schedule, she said. This reduced the client's perceived risk as value to the client's interest. The consulting firm's percentage rose. We were able to understand their real reasons, she said. All this was just from the role reversal exercise before the negotiation. The model also reveals the weakness in one's own position. We found out that we are not taking as much risk as I had thought Heidi said. 
The client wanted us to take more risk, she added. We found the holes in our story. With such information, we can start the negotiation by asking more specifically about the other party's perception, what is likely bothering them, and subject they might consider more important to discuss. The model is especially good for identifying the overall process that led to the problem. If you fix your problem, but you don't fix the process that led to the problem, you will have another problem next month with the same bad process. If one of the radios breaks on an airplane that is part of my airline, I know the main Maintenance department will fix it. That's not my concern. I want to know why a radio broke in flight. I want to see if there is some generic process I need, I need to fix. If I don't do that, I'm likely to have a flat tire next month, a propeller problem the month after, and a cylinder problem the month after that. I need to find the process that led to the problem. The model will also help you figure out who is the right counterpart. For example, both strike, type striker and synthesis producers of high quality heat and other joint replacements are favored by many doctors for the quality of their products. But hospital purchasing department, which want to buy much chimney, have cut into their margins by turning to lower quality competitors. Using the model, the companies discovered they should be getting doctors to negotiate for them with their own purchasing department. The doctors should be taking are talking about product performance and longevity, not the price of a ship component. We are going to use this process all the time now, said Ben Pitcher, director of the head care division at Hyper. Years after John Marotta took my course, he wrote to me, saying his wallet had been stolen. He asked me to rush to him another laminated model checklist card, claiming it was the most valuable thing in his wallet. I knew him religiously, said John, the CEO of medical device company in Denver, which is more important than my credit card.